As we remember the great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, we take a look at some of the first words he spoke on the cross. So we see that in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. So this is one of the most popular verses. Everybody has heard this. Uh, even unbelievers, atheists, uh, because they simply can't comprehend it. Uh, in today's world that is filled with hate and discrimination and uh, cancel culture, so it's very difficult to understand these words where you, where you have a person who's being persecuted and he's praying for his persecutors. So here we see our, the characteristics of our Lord, that he is loving, he is unforgiving, sorry, he is forgiving, and that he is merciful. So in fact, uh, the, the very act of taking on flesh and blood and being born in a manger, being part of a humble household, and his ministry, and eventually his sacrifice on the cross, this itself is a great act of forgiveness, of love. So is there any other characteristic you notice in these words? So Jesus, he's an intercessor. We see that he's interceding to the Father. Does he still intercede for us? Yes, absolutely. So we see that in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So yes, he is still interceding for us. Praise God. So how important it is to, to have a forgiving nature or a forgiving spirit in us. So, it is not easy sometimes to forgive our own loved ones. We see spouses, you know, uh, we see a lot of rise in the divorce cases, in spouses uh, living separated lives, sometimes siblings fighting among one another because of property issues which is a very common thing. You see a brother not speaking to another brother for years together. So let alone your enemies, it's difficult to forgive your family. But then still sometimes we do forgive our loved ones simply because we love them. We forgive our children. But unfortunately there is no reward for loving your loved ones. So we see that in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 46. Matthew 5, 43 to 46. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? So it is clear here, if you have to be sons of God, then you have to have a forgiving spirit. So the Son of God 
became son of man so that sons of men can become sons of god so we need to inherit the characteristics of god to be true followers of christ so is there only no reward for not forgiving your enemies is it simply that you don't forgive okay somebody you don't like so there's just no reward that's all or will there be judgment on you as well so jesus explains this in the parable of the unforgiving servant so we read this in matthew chapter 18 verses 23 to 35 Matthew 18:23 to 35 so I'll just summarize this parable so Jesus compares heaven to a certain king who wanted to settle his accounts with the servants and there was one servant who was not able to pay his debt so the king had ordered for this servant to be sold along with his wife and children so the servant pleaded to the king to forgive his debt and the king moved with compassion forgave his debt now the same servant goes out and catches hold of a fellow servant who owed him money and he also pleaded for to forgive his debt but he did not and he got him thrown in prison so when the king got to know this he was furious and he told the servant that i forgive your debt so likewise you should have forgiven your fellow servant's debt but he did not so he handed him over to the torturers until he paid his debt in full so jesus explains concludes this parable in verse 35 so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses so coming back to the verse luke 2334 so there jesus says they do not know what they do so it's like saying they do not know god so if a person who hurts us we can understand that that person doesn't know god or maybe knows god but is blinded because of ego pride lust envy and that is the reason why they hurt you in the first place so if they knew god then they wouldn't have hurt you and likewise we can also see in first corinthians chapter 2 verses 7 to 8 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 7 to 8 but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the lord of glory so it is simply because those people didn't know God and had him crucified so our forgiving spirit may introduce jesus to the people who hurt us after all having this attitude will enable us to follow two of the greatest commandments jesus gave us that is to love your god with all your heart mind and soul and to love thy neighbors as thyself So Jesus cared about his persecutors. After all, his persecutors are his creation. And you see around the world in the universe there's there are lots of things he has created. But mankind is his flagship creation. Because after all God created man in his image. so he loved them 
and would forgive them only if they humbled themselves and repented so the bible is very clear about this so this intercessory prayer on the cross father forgive them shows the son or the uh, god that god the son is interceding on behalf of us to god the father just like how we would pray to the father through the son in spirit so this prayer was answered in the lives of many if you see immediately after he died the rome there was a roman centurion at the foot of the cross his spiritual eyes were open and he also says surely this was the man that this man was son of god then one of the thieves also accepted christ and he was saved and a month later 3000 people in jerusalem were saved we read that in acts chapter 2 verse 41 so on the cross forgiveness was for all it was for people who were born before jesus's time on earth and while jesus was on earth and also after jesus's death and resurrection so this salvation this forgiveness was for all of mankind so jesus paid for the sins which we committed deliberately or out of ignorance but when we are born again we to become an answer to jesus's prayer father forgive them thank you mm-hmm.